statistics and Excel, standard error, margin of error, hypothesis test, and confidence interval introduction part number two. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Well, oh, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, just constructing the tables as we go from here, or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint related to statistics. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently three tabs down below. We've got the example, practice, blank tabs. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we are working on, was originally blank, and now we're gonna be continuing on with the blank part of the blank tab as we continue our practice problem, practicing our Excel tools as we go. Quick recap of what we have done thus far. Our objective is putting together the tools to get to hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, the two major categories that will be used when trying to find information about a larger population by pulling samples from that population. One of our key tools and resources or ideas being the central limit theorem because we would like to be able to put our data in that nice bell-shaped type curve because we can describe it nice and easily. That being with two numbers, one being the middle point or the average or the mean, the other being the spread, that's the standard deviation. Remembering that the sample information, or I should say the actual population data itself might not have a normal distribution, might be skewed to the left, might be skewed to the right, might have a uniform distribution. But if we were to imagine taking all possible combinations of whatever sample size we are using and taking the average of each of those, that is the one that could have more of a bell-shaped type of curve. With our two numbers, the mean is usually more intuitive because whether we're talking about the mean of the population, the mean of the sample, or the mean of uh, the standard deviations, the X bars, we're trying to get towards that middle number. But with the standard deviation, the spread, remember that the, the spread or standard deviation of the population may or may not be known. And all the, although it gives an idea of the spread, it might not be a normal distribution. And that's what we're looking for, something that has that bell-shaped curve. The standard deviation of the sample, likewise, might give some useful information, but it might not be lending us to that bell-shaped curve. It's the standard deviation of the X-bars, which we imagine to be all the different combination of the sample sizes that we're going to be taking, the average of all of those, which we probably won't actually do, but rather use a nice formula to approximate. So last time we looked at a, a center point with an average number of items that we can imagine of 799. And then we said the population is given at the 34,000 represented by the large N. The standard deviation of the population, which we assumed here was known, was 200. And then we looked at two, which is two standard deviations away, meaning that if we're two standard deviations away and something that's a bell-shaped type of curve, most of the information is in the middle in that 95 or so percent area. We looked at different ends, which represents the sample size. As the sample size increased, the standard error 
which is basically the standard deviation of, in essence, the X bars, not the population, not the sample, but the X bars. If that's the case, then we can look at our margin of error, meaning if we think about this as the middle point, we can then uh, say if we have a, a standard deviation, how many standard deviations on each side are we talking here? We're talking two standard deviations away on each side. So we calculated then the, the margin of error and used that to calculate the lower X bar and the upper X bar for each of these ends or samples that we can imagine that we take out of the population of data 34,000, which we're saying the middle point is 7,900. That means that we have this spread of information with an approximation of the 95% of these different ranges given the different uh, populations. And then we, the, the different sample sizes. And then we graphed this. So then we said, okay, if I took a sample size of 25 versus 1,000, and I now can assume the bell-shaped curve. And remember, when we're talking about the sample size, often the question is, how large does the sample need to be before the data becomes somewhat bell-shaped because of the central limit theorem uh, is, the, is the idea, right? And so is it large enough in order to basically justify, you know, the bell-shaped nature of the curve, which is likely to happen uh, with a large enough sample when we're talking about the X bars, even if the original population is not uh, normally distributed. And then here's the related standard error, which we looked with the lookup table, and then we graphed these. So now we have our, our graphs, and this is A, which is at the 25, which is more spread out with a smaller, but the center point is the same, and we can imagine 95% basically within the two standard deviations, those ranges being given that by the table. All right, so now let's think about this in terms of an introduction to our hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. In other words, how might we use this, which you can think of as depending in part on, do we know the middle point or not? Do, do, are we looking at a situation where we're saying, hey, someone is telling us the middle point, the average, the average amount of production of items, let's say, or the average cost of something to build a fence or something like that, we said was $799. Can we test that and see if that average is actually true or not? That's one hypothesis test situation. Or we might have no idea what the, at what the middle point is. That's what we're trying to figure out. We don't know the mean. We don't have a hypothesis already. And therefore, we have to make something up and you might end up using like a confidence interval concept in that case. So let's build our data over here. So I'm going to say, let's make a skinny AA and then I'll put this in AB. And I'm going to say that this is going to basically be our hypothesis, which I'll represent with an H sub O. I'm going to double click on this, select the O, right click on it, format the cells and make it a subscript. Okay, so we're going to say the hop hypothesis is in essence that uh, that uh, uh, mu, we're going to say the middle point or the mean. Let's go to insert and I'll say the symbol of mu. I'm going to insert it and then close it and then go out of it. And oh, now it's a subscript. I didn't want to make that. I'm going to select it, right click, format, unsubscript that one. <laughs> so the mu... I'm going to say, which is the, which is the mean or average point, let's say, and I'm going to put a dash here is going to be, uh, that. And then I also want to unsubscript this or delete this. This got a little bit messier than I thought here. Uh, we'll keep it at that. Okay. And so then that's the mean and it's going to be, we're going to imagine that it's equal to that. 799 right we're going to say that's equal to the 799 we started out with and we'll say that the standard deviation std of the population we're going to imagine that is known to be equal to that same uh 200 that we had before so there it is and we're going to say that our net our n i'm going to say that equals n which will be the same 
which will be the actual full population size, we're going to say is equal to the uh, 34,000. So we can say, well, this is the average price of a to build a fence for our construction company or something like that, which will change on the on the project or whatever. And it's around 799 standard deviation 2000 and that we're counting last year's fences or something 34,000. All right, so now let's imagine this is this is basically the given data. And we'll say I'll make that orange as basically given da, 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 da. and then we're going to say we take a sample, take a sample. And let's look at that. I'm going to make this black and white and the sample we're going to imagine n or the sample size little n sample size let's say is 350. So we'll imagine we take a sample of 350 to test this proposition out. Uh, the X bar, uh, the X bar or the mean of sample. So we're going to imagine of the sample that we took, the middle point of the sample is 830. Notice that that's significant. That's different than the 799. And from a hypothesis testing perspective, the question would be, is that significant enough for us to say that the actual population isn't 799 based on the sample that we pulled in? All right, so that's going to be that's going to be basically the idea. Now, notice that this X bar, you can imagine basically, or that's the mean of the sample. So remember, we have the mean of the population. We're, we're assuming this is like what we assume the mean of the population is going to be in this case. That's our hypothesis. We have the mean of the sample, which we which we would expect to be close to the mean of the population. And then you can also think of the mean of the means as if you took every combination of of uh, the of uh, of samples of 350 and took the average of it. You should all three methods hopefully get something tending towards the, the the actual mean. Okay, with the standard deviation is a little different. Standard deviation, you got the standard deviation of the population, which measures the spread, which is going to be different than possibly the standard deviation of all possible X bars, which is what we want, because that's the thing that's going to have the bell shape. All right, let's make this blue and bordered. And then we're going to say that uh, so, uh, so we want to say, is this reasonable? Is the the hypothesis uh, H sub zero reason reasonable given our sample, right? So H sub zero, I'm going to make this a sub zero format cells subscript. And that's our question. Let's put a question mark on it. And then I'll make that orange because that's part of our given data uh let's do that this is basically part of our given data too let's make that orange as well all right so then i could calculate what's my sampling error now if obviously if we know the actual number and and this is uh what our sample is we can call this the sampling error if we think the mean is actually the correct number which would be the difference of 31 right so there's a difference of 31 is that statistically significant for us to uh, reject the original hypothesis. So here's going to be our formula once again for the calculation of the X bar. Let's go ahead and make this a skinny AD. And then first we'll think about this from the concept of hypothesis testing and then possibly a confidence interval. So hypothesis testing method. So let's make this larger. I'm going to make that the header. I'm going to make that black and white. So we'll say uh, black and white. So we could then first think about whether we need to use this correction factor. And it's usually if that's great, if that if it's greater, uh, less than is it less than 5%. So in other words, is n, which is the size of the sample divided by large n, the, the size of the population, that's the correction. And the question is 0.05 or 
uh, is the cutoff. So to calculate that, we're going to say this is going to be equal to the uh, sample, which is 350, and then divided by the N of the population, which we're estimating at 34. Let's percentify that. And, da, da, and so is it, let's make it 5% to have them both in percent. So, it, so it's greater than, uh, than 5%, so we should be good to, to drop the second bit out and just use this side to, to estimate X bar. So then I'm gonna say, all right, the standard uh, error, the standard error is gonna be this calculation, which again, you could say, in essence, if I say insert, it's gonna be symbol, you could call it the sigma of uh, X, uh, see it did it, now I'm gonna enter, go back into it, X bar, right? And then uh, it's going to be, you can also call it the standard error. So a standard deviation, not of the population, not of the sample, but if we had all combinations of the 350 size samples and the average of all those, right? We're going to say that that's going to be equal to this formula, which is approximating that given this case that we know the standard deviation of the population, which in future presentations we'll think about when we don't know that, we'll take that divided by the square root, which is a formula here, square root of the number uh, n, and here is our n at 350, enter, it closes this up for me. Let's add some decimals, home tab, adding some decimals, there we have it. Then I'm gonna say that a, which is gonna, I'm gonna say that's gonna be equal to alpha, and we'll say that's equal to the level uh, of significance. So what's the significant level? This is somewhat of a random number, that, but we often use the 5% in part. I believe that came up as a, as a kind of like a, a tradition or just a norm, uh, possibly because like 95% of the data is usually between two standard deviations. So it just seemed like a re reasonable cutoff, but that's going to help us to measure our confidence level. So we want to say how confidence are, how confident are we of our conclusion? So we're going to say, all right, then we're going to say that this is going to be the, we can also say the confidence level or interval. So the confidence level, then we're going to say is going to be one minus the 5%. So the level of significance is if it's outside, which would be 0.05, which means that if it's inside, we're going to have the 95% uh, confidence. Now, the, the, notice when we look at this graph, you've got the two sides of it. So we're thinking about if it's outside the level on this side, or if it's outside the level on this side. And oftentimes, you know, the question could be, uh, we think, if we think that, that, that it's gonna be greater than, if we think this is gonna be off because it's gonna be greater than that, then we're really looking only at this side, right? We're not gonna be off on this side, right? If we're just looking at the one tail. So we have one tail test uh, and a two tail test, right? It could be a tail to the right, a tail to the left, or a two-tailed test. So in this case, we're going to say that. See the alpha, uh, the alpha divided by two, divided by two is going to give us the per side information. In other words, if we imagine ninety-five percent is like in the middle, and then that means five percent are in these two tails. That means that half of the five percent right, is going to be in each of the sides of the tails. So this is going to be equal to the 0.05 divided by 2, adding some decimals so we can see that. So that comes out to 0 0.025. And then I can calculate the Z, which is equal to the number of standard, standard deviations. So now I'm thinking about measuring this in terms of of standard deviations, and we're looking at that upper uh, that that upper amount. So if I'm here, if I'm measuring it up 
to this point, that's what ba that's what we're looking for in terms of the standard deviation. So I'm going to say then that we have, and this is going to be the calculation of equals norm dot s dot inverse. So I'm looking at the area under the curve. I want to look at it related to that 25 percent. But if I select this one, it's going to it's going to give me everything up to that point, right? It's so if I so it's going to be uh, if I add some decimals, we're at uh, the 1.96. I really want just the top bit up here. So I'm going to take one minus. I'm going to go in, in here and say this is going to be the one minus that. And so that's going to give me the 1.96, which you would think would be up here in terms of if I was measuring not in X, but in the Z score in terms of standard deviations. How many standard deviations is it up here? Remember that the general idea is that around, if it was 2%, around 95% would be in the middle. So now we have this uh, nine point, which is around the 2%, right? The, the, the 1.96. So I'm gonna say, all right, so that's gonna be the Z. And then we have our margin of error, margin of error. So this way you could think about the spread around the middle point. So if I think this is the standard deviation that's giving us the spread, then, and this is how much distance I want from it. This is the middle point, the, 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 which would be the average of the mean. And then we're thinking about how far out are we gonna go? Well, we have the, the standard error is the standard deviation and we want 1.96, almost two of those standard deviations. So it's gonna be the standard error times the 1.96 almost two standard deviations away so it's going to be 21 and i can then add some decimals on the high and low end so there we have that and so we're going to say all right that means that if we look at our range we've got the lower x bar the lower range is going to be we're thinking middle point the middle point is the 799 minus the margin of error which is going to be that and we'll add some decimals doot, doot. and then the upper x bar is going to be once again our middle point 799 uh, plus the margin of error doot, doot. and so we're we're going from there to there let's go and add some decimals to that one so that's going to be our range so again you can imagine from here to here down here on this graph we're measuring it in terms of x's but you can also measure it in terms of right the z's the standard uh deviation okay so now we're going to say that those are the lower and upper and we can make a comparison now uh to see if we to see if this number that we got makes sense by the way let's take a look at this i looked at three uh 350 is here so let's just this graph over here and say that let's make a at equal to the 350 and so now we have the a graph is is basically the graph for that uh, 350 uh so we can compare it there a little bit better possibly okay so notice what we did with the hypothesis test is we took the middle point being the hypothesized number the 799 not the number that we came up with with our sample of the 830 and now we can say okay if that's my range then the question is is this 830 you know within that range you can see okay it's not within the range and so you would think that that would be statistically significant so in other words you can insert like a bar over here sometimes it's nice to see in a picture we could say let's add a little bar we're gonna go do 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 and let's make it, I'm going to make it green. So that middle point is, what did we say the middle point was? 799. And then we're saying that the range is going up to 819. So that's going to be, do, 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 you know, somewhere over here uh, with the 819. And we're looking at the A1 is where the tail is, that the cutoff is. And this, what we got was 830, which is, you know, way out here somewhere which is outside what you would expect the normal range would be, would be the general idea. Okay.
let's try to represent that with a cool formula here. We can say uh, compare uh, uh, compare x uh, to sample mean. So I want this to say true or false if it if it's within there or not. So in other words, if this number is within the range, I want to give it a true. And if it's not within the range, I'm going to give a false. How can we do that? Well, it sounds like a logic test type of formula, which would be equal to and then if formula. We have two tests to meet. So I'm going to put an and in it. So I'm going to embed an and. And so the first logic test is that is that this number would need to be uh, greater than it needs to be greater than to, to this number. It could possibly say greater or equal to greater than or equal to let's say this number. That's the first logic test and comma this number would need to be less than let's say or equal to this number close that up that's the and those are the two logic tests both need to be met comma the value if true what do we want if it's true i uh, i want you to give me uh, a true it would be within the range i'm going to put quotes to put text t and then quotes to end the text and then comma for the next argument what if it's false i'm going to put quotes put an f if it's false duh, and we should get a false right but boom and then we get a, we get a false there right so if this number, I'm picking up this, if, if this number was uh, 825, uh, then we would get, well, let me undo that, undo, hold on. If this number was, let me do that again. If this was 780, let's say, then it would be in the middle and it would be true. Okay. So let's undo that and say, all right. And then we can also think about it in terms of a Z score. So remember, we can have this X down here uh, in terms of X's, X bars, and we can also have it in terms of the Z score. So let's say what the Z score would be. We can say uh, uh, the Z score uh, X bar. So we'll say that this is going to be the Z, the Z I'm going to say X bar z score that's not a z z i don't finger the keyboard right with a z score is going to be so how do we calculate the z it's going to be if we're comparing then the what we act what we actually got which is the 380 imagining that the center point is actually the 799 for the hypothesis in essence and that's going to be in essence our sampling uh error which i didn't spell at all right divided by the standard deviation, which in our case is going to be the, the standard error, and then enter. So now we're representing this in terms of the Z. Now we want it to be within two standard deviations or 1.96, and this is way over the two standard deviations. So once again, I could do a, a logic test and just have that pop up and say, okay, if, let's say if tab, we want to say if this number is uh, less than this number, then we would want you to have a true brackets. But if not, we're going to want it to be false. And so it should give us a false here because once again, this number is above the Z score, which would be the other way to measure this is too far out to the right. All right. So we could we could also think about it this way. We could look at the p uh, value which means we're going to look at the the percent uh, up to this uh, up to this 2.9 so we're going to say if i have the actual z score the formula we use we're going to say this is going to be equal to the norm dot s dot dist because we have the z score and the Z, it gives us the Z here, which we're going to say is the 2.9. And then we're going to say comma, and we want it to be cumulative. So I'm going to be entering a one. Now note that if I just enter that, then it's going to give us, if I add some, uh, let's make it a percent. Boom, boom. 
it's going to be way up. It's going to be way up here, adding everything up up until that point, which is most of the data. Because remember that within here, within two standard deviations would be all the data. And this is cumulative up to there. What we're really looking for is the information on this right side of of the graph above above that area. So I'm going to, so what I want to do is say I want to take one minus that whole bit because the whole area of the curve is 100. So one minus all of that will give us that uh, top bit here. And then notice that if I'm, if I'm measuring both tails, that would be measuring only one tail. If I want both tails, because this is symmetrical, I can take that and say, I'm gonna multiply it, this whole thing, I've got to put brackets around it. So it does the subtraction first, brackets around it, and then times two. And so now I've get to the 0.37%, and that is less than, in this case, we compared it to the 5%. And so, so then that's another way that you can basically check this. So if we did our logic test, the check would be if brackets, we're going to say if this number uh, is, is less than this number, then we want you to give me a true brackets, uh, I'm sorry, false, and then comma, if not, give me uh, quotes a T for true. And then once again, I should get a false there. So let's highlight all of this and make this uh, blue and bordered. And so let's make this blue. And so that's just an introduction. We'll do more examples of this kind of hypothesis testing in future presentations. But let's take a look at the other way that we might do this. Let's make this a skinny. Let's make this skinny over here. Home tab format painter and make this one a skinny. And then we could use confidence interval method. And so let's make this a little larger. Let's make this black and white font group black and white. Now notice in this example, we're imagining, we imagined that we knew this. And that's what we're trying to prove. Is that the center? If I didn't really know what the center was, then we'd have to basically say I got my sample. And that's all I got. I got to assume that's basically the center. And the question is, how confident can I be that that's the center given the example. Now you can still set this up as like a as like a hypothesis test because you can think, okay, even if I don't have an assumption of what the middle is, I can say, let me assume that like the middle point is actually 829. Would this still be a reasonable outcome if it was 829? What about 828? What about 827? And you can start to think, well, if that was the middle point, how far it, and I chose everything close to it Would that result that I got be within the tails of the distribution. And that's one way that you can kind of think of getting an interval, right? But that's kind of a tedious way to think of trying to get the interval. What we'd like to be able to do is say, well, can't I just make that the center point and then basically think about the interval around the center point using my, my bell shaped curve calculations and whatnot. And the general idea is that's what we would like to do. Although we might get into like the T testing, which is going to be a little bit different in terms of the shapes to come up with that particular interval, which we'll talk about more later. But right now, just to get the general concept here with the confidence interval, we'd have like the lower X bar, for this confidence interval is going to be uh, equal to, uh, we're just going to use the same idea here, except that we're going to be starting from the, the, the mean, I'm going to say, this is what we've, what we got at the middle point, not this. And then I'm going to say plus our margin of error. And then I'm, I'm going to, I'm sorry, this is going to be the lower minus the margin of error. And then this is going to be the upper X bar for I. And this is going to be once again, taking this number minus the margin of error. Now that's a little too simplified. Uh, hold on a sec. This would be plus the margin of error. Because again, we might be using T tests or whatever. But right now, you know, so we'll talk about that later. But right now, I just want to get the concept of with the hypothesis testing, where we might know the mean, and then we could use it with the if we don't know the mean at all, 
then then again, we might have to use something like the confidence intervals, which means you're going to use whatever we got as the middle point and try to think how confident we could be that that's the middle point. And so I'm going to then say, okay, let's put some brackets around this. Uh, and we could say the sampling error is significant. And so in this case, uh, we have measured from this point and notice that this number is now not within this range and therefore we would think it'd be significant if you thought about it this way right so again we, sometimes we might not know what the mean is and that's when, when we might be more likely to use the confidence interval but if we use the confidence interval and we knew what the mean was we're measuring from this point and we can see that this number is not between there so i could use then a logic test if brackets and we can say that the logic test would be if this number this time uh would is uh is is uh, i have to do two logic tests this this number is let's do an and brackets and this number has to be greater than or equal to let's say this number and comma this number also has to be less than or equal to this number close up the and function comma back to the if function what do you want to do if that's true let's just put a t quote t and then comma what do you want us to do if it's false let's put a quote false the quotations give it a text and then it is once again uh false if this number happened to be uh 810 then it would be true. Let's undo that. And that's the general idea. So we'll look at more of these examples in future presentations.